Hi everyone, it's Eileen from No That's a Crafty Idea and I am here with just a little craft with me and make together um, just a little piece of ephemera that I've been working on that I wanted to show you and it is a little folio tuck-in for a junk journal so it's just big enough to pop into the, the back of a junk journal and the beauty of this you can make it any size you want really so it all depends on on the envelope you use and it's just using an envelope and a piece a, well a couple of pieces of scrapbook paper because you're going to need some extra bits um, and then what it is it's just a little open up folio I, I don't think you can, you're going to be able to see it all but um, so it opens up I'll show you it like this so you've got the top flap has got a pocket in and it's got lots of bits of ephemera in and then these side parts are flip out and you've got lots of journaling space and then on the bottom there's another little pocket and it's got lots of bits of ephemera in and then in the middle is an envelope and that's packed with bits of ephemera and, and little bits and pieces and um, just whatever it is that you want to pop in and it's it's a lovely little tuck in and I've set this one up to look like um, an old um, photo album type thing and it's just such a cute little you know just I just love the way it just all folds in and then it just springs open and it's there's all these lovely wonderful bits to open out and and to explore which is what I love so I just thought I'd show you how I made it and um, and see if you want to make one with me. I'm going to change the um, the opening though because I didn't realise but this is putting it's causing this to have to bend up when I'm popping it in. So I'm going to do a different closure on the next one which I'll show you when we get to it. So they're very simple, very simple indeed. So this is literally just you measure your envelope and whatever size your envelope is, is the size you want the square in the middle and that's going to dictate the, the sides. So I've got mine all measured out and I'm going to just show you how I quickly do it. So first of all we need a scoreboard. Now I've got, an, if this is a nice butterfly on the outside, so I'm going to measure it from the outside. So I'll, this is the orientation I want it. Or is it because I want it so that when that folds down yeah so that when that folds down that's yes so it was the right orientation just ignore me folks <laughs> right let's see now I'm gonna measure this one it is the sides want to be seven inches uh, seven centimeters sorry and I'm just gonna score and then score again and this is going to give me a little frame around my envelope the other one the envelope is quite tight in but this is going to give me a little frame now the bottom needs to be right let me work this out that wants to be the top that's right the bottom needs to be nine centimeters and then the top needs to be eight centimeters So, you want to score your sides so that they're the same distance. So you want to put your envelope in the middle and then you want to measure it out to, so that you've got each side the same distance away. Yeah, and then then that's where you score. And then you, you on the, the top and bottom, what I would say is the bottom flap I would make a centimetre bigger just because that's going to fold under and then obviously this is going to be it's going to look like the envelope so that's going to be the flap of the envelope you don't want that riding down too low i mean that's a personal preference if if that's the way you want it then that's the way you want it it's up to you so let's just move this and that's all the scoring i think we need at the minute so then we're just going to cut out these four corners now I'm going to cut them at a very slight angle so I'm going to cut them to the point where the, the two score lines uh, match but I'm going to cut them at a very slight angle because I want um, the the finished thing to fold up neatly without having to to force anything shut and you'll see what I mean in a second so I'm going to cut that at a slight angle just very slightly 
Now I'm going to use this as a template for the rest of it so that it all works out roughly the same. And that's just going to give you a symmetry and it's just going to just going to make it easier for you and it means everything's going to look you know as though it's in the right place. This is a bit awkward. <laughs> Try not to let it move. Right. And again, now when you come to the top, because obviously it's a different size, just measure, just line it up so that it's it's about right. You know, um, with the in the same place. There we go. I'm sure you know what I mean. Actually, I'm going to just cut this one freehand, just because I can't cut like backwards like that. But what I'll do is I'll flip this one. That's it. There we go. There we are. And that way, hopefully, everything measures up and looks about right. There we go. Don't throw those away because they can become little um, tags or cards. Now, just going to should have kept me uh, bone folder out, but not to worry, I've got my scissors. And I'm just going to fold all these in. so slightly long there we go that's it what I'm going to do is just trim that down just slightly there right now hopefully that's your basic shape and as you can see by cutting in we've kind of give it that kind of envelope shape now personally I'm going to round the corners that's up to you I mean this is a personal preference and I know that these are not quite the right angle but I'm just going to get them approximately I just I prefer to have rounded corners it's just the way I am you don't have to um, I just like it it's my aesthetic but I just think it gives it like a, a more finished look basically what you've got is this so it's going to fold up like that that's your basic shape that you want so our envelope is going to sit in there and as you can see I've left it so that there's a nice frame around it I could have done it so that it was exactly the size of the envelope but um, I did that on the last one um, and it works but it just I think that it's there's a slight um, a slight gap down the sides but it's better for being able to fill it with more ephemera if you if it's got a little bit more room to to bulk up if you know what i mean so i don't want that to remain just plain so i'm gonna just stencil on it if you'll excuse me i'm just gonna reach over and get me stencils i keep on moving things to like tidy up and organize and then forget where i put them <laughs> so here's my stencil book right let's see I used the other one on that, so I'm going to use this one on this. There we go. Right. Now. I don't suppose it matters which way up it goes, really. Where's my brush? And I'm just going to use the Vintage Photo Distress I need to do this. I've got my blending brush. And I'm just going to go ahead and just get a pattern on there. And it doesn't have to be an even pattern. It can just be whatever pattern. I want this to look like a little faded in places. Um, 
a little darker in some places so I'm not I'm not making sure that it's all evenly um, stenciled I'm kind of giving it a you see how it's turning out some of it's darker than others and I like that because it's, it gives it more of a vintage look I'm just going to line up my stencil again make sure it's all ready ever so slightly different but it doesn't matter a bit more there I love doing this this is one of my favourite things to do I absolutely love doing it on coffee dyed paper now because I want I'm going to decorate the inside so but I do want these edges done so I'm just going to carry on but with the flap up because I want it the whole pattern all the way in the envelope there we go and it doesn't matter that I've gone over because like I said I'm going to cover that want to make sure that I've got all of that edge whoops a daisy I'm stuck there perfect now that looks great right let's just pop that out of the way and what I might do before I cover it I might if I can find me my dabber I'm just gonna distress around the edges now I'm using a cream envelope, you can use any colour envelope you want, you could even make your own envelope out of a decorative paper if you wanted. I'm using a cream one because I want the, the kind of, I think it looks better with the distress and with the ageing than just a plain one does, um, like a white one. I'd, I kind of like the cream because it works better with the vintage photo and I'm aware that this paper isn't exactly um, cream but it doesn't matter because um, at the end of the day it just let's see is that right yeah that's right it doesn't really matter because at the end of the day it's, it's all going to be decorated anyway so next step we need a little bit more of the card so let me just find where I've put my other card and I have popped it somewhere <laughs> let's see um where on earth did i put the card excuse me folks i'm just going to quickly get some card because i must have put it away without thinking this is what happens when you tidy up <laughs> i really ought to stop trying to tidy up okay right i've got a bit of card now this is the book that I've been using, um, Chic Vintage and it's a mix and match paper. The papers are quite lovely especially for a project like this because you don't really need a focal point. Let's see, I haven't got much left of it. Okay, I think we'll go with this one. Right, now what I want to create here I want to create the flip outs for here so it's going to be so these are seven so I want it at about six but I'm going to cut them at seven because I want um, part of them to be a little hinge so I'm going to cut them at seven centimeters again this all depends on the size that you're going to do your envelope um, because the envelope size dictates all of the rest of the sizes on this and I'm just quickly going to cut strip at seven if I can get this to work that's it wrong way seven centimeters and that'll do that and then I'm going to cut because I want the pockets to be very out of the same paper so we've got the, the flap is eight inch uh, eight centimeters um so this part is eight centimeters and this part is nine so i'm going to cut the pockets so if that's eight i'm going to cut six and seven so they're going to be two centimeters shorter 
than um, than the actual um, area that I'm covering. Actually, yeah, I'm going to cut them both at seven because that works. Right, let's get that put down. There we go. Now this is just a case of measuring up and um, obviously the centre piece, it all, it's all down to whatever size. Uh -huh. I've already said that, haven't I? Yeah. So I'm just quickly going to measure that out and then I will just cut this freehand. Well, I'll try to anyway without having a complete mess of it. There we go. Be easier if I do it that way. Right. Now these probably will need to get trimmed down, especially on the re where the, the rounded edge is, but we can do that when we're done. Right. And now this is going to be our pocket. So I'm literally just going to um, find the centre of this and then cut that like that. There we go, perfect. Right, first things first, I'm going to round my corners on everything. <laughs> Obviously I'm only going to round two corners on this because the other side's going to be a flip out. There we go. Right, now I want to create a little divot, if I can find a little ball punch, in both the pockets. Let's try and get them centred. And I'm doing quite a deep one. Because you don't have loads of room at the top to show the ephemera that you've got in. So I want to be able to see the ephemera. Let's get them bits out. Now, with this, I need the scoreboard for these. It just makes it much easier. <laughs> so I'm going to score them at one centimetre. And then that should give us just the right size. Take that out so that we bolt them down. Whoops, a daisy. Now, what side do we want up? So I think we want that side. I should have scored them the other way, but not to worry. Let's just give them a, a nice fold down. And that's going to become our little hinge. So what I'll do because this is going to be a hinge I'm just going to snip that corner so that it's it's not sticking you can't see the the bottom bit sticking out if you know what I mean it just makes it neater we are going to cover this with um, coffee dyed paper but for now <laughs> now I know what you're thinking that's a rounded edge but what we're going to do is we're going to stick it on first and then when it's dry we can cut round so that it's all the same shape let's just go a little bit there right so let's start with our glue let's get these edges stuck down and then we'll get this this one on and we want to try and get 
and then once that's stuck down we'll move across and we'll stick this one down it seems complicated but once you get your hand around it it is really quite easy but it makes a really lovely little ephemera folio um, just to pop into your, your journals and add in bits of things you know you could just, you could even use it as a, um, a photo album um, which would be really cute um, or even for your letters I mean I don't know maybe you've got a pen, a pen pal or you still write um, handwritten letters to someone I know my daughter's just um, started writing to her pen pal again um, and way back in the day when I was young and, and daft and in love I used to write letters to my husband even though we lived together <laughs> because sometimes I think it's nice to get something through the post you know that's not a bill or a, <laughs> you know an electoral roll thing or, <laughs> or something similar you know <laughs> sometimes it's nice just to get a letter I might do that again I might send him a love note I haven't done that for a very long time he used to buy me these lovely little cards. I don't know where he used to get them from. But they were kind of like little credit cards. But they had lovely little sayings on. And um, and cute little um, just pictures. And and uh, I love you because. And oh, they were great. <laughs> the things you do when you're young and daft. <laughs> right. Now before I stick anything else on. I want to give everything a good ink. So we'll start off by closing this. It's much easier to ink at this stage than it is when you've um, you've or you're already decorating it because it's easier to access everything before you start sticking things in. So if you're going to ink, and it's again personal preference, I would definitely ink now. And I kind of like the the aged feel that you get with it. And I mean there's lots of different papers you could use. These would look great I think with a, a Tim Holtz paper or with a Stamperia paper. And I've actually got some different papers. I'm going to try some different um, designs on them. I mean this design's quite a big design. Um, it was just because I love this paper and I've been waiting for a project to use it on. Um, that, that made me want to use this but I can imagine something that's like a smaller design would be um, look stunning. And I mean, like I say, you could you could make your own envelope out of any kind of um, any kind of uh, patterned paper. If you had patterned paper, um, you certainly could make the envelope to whatever size you want. Now you see, this is dry, so I'm just going to cut round that circle. That sorry, that corner, and there you go. It's all nice and neat now. I'll do the same again. I'm going to just trim this one just slightly because it is just slightly bigger than the um, the flap and I don't want that. I want it to be nice and, um, and tucked in. There we go. Right. But yeah, I've got, there's loads of like, lovely scrapbooking card. You know, and I, I often look at it and think, oh, I wish I could do something with you. What can I do that's really going to showcase your beautiful pattern? Um, other than making covers or, you know, other things, you know, making tags out of them. I just think, you know, there's got to be something else. And folios are a perfect way of showcasing your papers, um, especially if you've got some really cute ones. And I made some nice folios to go into the um, the Ladybird junk journals. Um, um, I think, I don't know if I did do a tutorial on them. I'll have a look back. And if I didn't, I'm, I'll do a tutorial on that. But um, yeah, they, they were really cute as well. Now, let's flip this and get these edges done. It's a lot of inking, but it's worth it. <laughs> It all looks very nice when it's all inked up. Believe me. <laughs> it 
so yeah it's, it's a nice way of using up your scrapbook papers because sometimes you know card is a little bit too thick to put into a junk journal especially if you if you're like me and you overfill your junk journals which i always end up doing um so yeah it's nice to have a different a different use for it and making these tuckings is a good way of adding extra space to your junk journal without having to stick something in you know these can be pulled out you can move them from junk journal to junk journal um, and uh, that way you're not losing them right I don't need to ink that because that's going to get covered but we do want to do these inside seams just because you, you're going to be able to see them and I want to highlight highlight where the seams are the folds I should say not the seams I'm thinking I'm sewing it <laughs> yeah. oh, I had a lovely surprise the other day there was a comment on one of my, uh, my videos from my sister, from my big sister. Um, it was really nice. She says that she enjoys watching my videos. I was so over the moon. She's just getting into junk journaling. Um, so, so, hi Mandy, if you're watching. <laughs> um, and she says she... Uh, she really enjoys watching it right so that's about done if i do anything else i'm going to sort out the opening because i tell you why i'll forget and then once everything's stuck on it'll be really hard to do so i'm going to pop a grommet in and then i can tie this with some um some ribbon there we go I want one of these a little bit aged if you don't have one of these machines or if you don't do grommets you can do the same as I, I did or you can just tie ribbon around it you don't have to have a grommet in you could just tie the whole thing up with ribbon and it's still going to work just as well so let's pop this in make sure I've got this the right way because I tried doing it the wrong way the other day and it went, all went very wrong is that right? there we go, perfect yep, perfect right, let's just pop this away now next step, we want to cover these now I know what you've been thinking, that's very different to that. Don't worry about it, don't worry about it, because we're going to cover it. So I'm going to just, I just tore around the other one, but I think what I'll do with this one is I'll just use the rule so that it's a little bit square. Just on there. There we are, and that should perfectly cover that. Right. Let's just do the same with this. So we need two. And these scraps will come in handy for something else. never mind making scraps because they're always used for something else <laughs> it's always another project to use them right now i am just literally just going to stick these down and yes it's going to poke out but we can trim that when everything's dry so let's get our glue book and where's my glue you can sew around these if you want i haven't personally sewn around them i think it would be a lot of sewing <laughs> And I don't know at which stage I would sew around them. Probably when I've got this coffee dyed paper on, I would then sew around them before I stick any pockets on. Um, because I think if you if you try to sew around it once you've got your pockets in, you might end up sewing your pockets shut. Um, <laughs> so yeah, if you're going to sew around it, I would probably do it um, now after you've done this um, coffee dyed paper. 
because that way you're not going to be sewing anything shut. I'm not going to bother because I, I don't think they need it. There we go. Same with this one. Just pop the glue on and I'm putting lots of glue on because I want it to stick well. I don't want the edges lifting up. It's going to be getting folded in and out so you want lots of glue on. So if I can go off the sticky page I need a new glue page. Let's try and get this position right. There we go. So you've done that. Let's make sure that's all nicely. There we go. Now, I'm not going to bother trimming it yet because I want it to dry properly first. So let's get there with pockets on next. Oh, that's going to be fine. I know that you can see, see this grommet, but I think it'll be fine. You know, I might just... I suppose we could pop a little circle on it is raised a little bit i'm going to just quickly let me just see if i can press it down a little bit more i don't think it's going to go that way but maybe i can press it down with this side nope where did the little thing go off it See now I've lost my little thing. I'll find it. <laughs> It'll turn up somewhere. <laughs> there it is. Okay. Now, don't do this at home. There we are. I just wanted that just a little bit flatter. <laughs> and what I might do is, I do have somewhere, I have some, no not to worry it doesn't really make that much difference you're gonna it's gonna get covered anyway when you put the uh, ribbon in and put your ephemera in right so I'm just gonna stick these down now um, and then we've got our pockets in and then we can start decorating I have inked them yes I have now I'm literally just gluing down the three sides Just try and get them equidistance from the sides and the bottom. There we go. And then the top one. What are you squeaking for, glue? Probably got a goober. Try and get an equidistance. Yeah. That's quite, not quite in the middle and that's going to bother me <laughs> because I'm going to know it's not exactly right. Okay, not to worry. I'm not going to panic about it. Right, I'm just going to give this a wipe, see if I can get the glue bar off. That's better. Now, we're at the stage where we can decorate. So... Um, what I've got is I've got a selection of these lovely photographs and I quite like the idea of using the old photographs. Oh, I'll tell you what we didn't do. We need to finish our, before we start decorating, let's finish our um, envelope. So I have some, if I can find it, some Stamperia paper. And all I want to do is, I want to just pop some in about like that. So where's my scissors? Just make sure it's all the way in. You can use anything for this. You could use tissue, you could use decorative paper, you could use um, just about anything you've got. Anything you've got. You could use a um, napkin. You could just leave it plain. I just like the idea of having a nice pretty surprise when you open the envelope. 
I mean, you could decorate the inside if you wanted to. You could decorate it with um, with photographs, and that would be a nice little surprise, wouldn't it? You could have a nice big photograph stuck on so that when you open it, it's just poking out. But I'm going to go with the Stamperia paper. <laughs> I just like it, and it's nice. And it's going to be a nice, bright surprise for whoever opens the envelope. I'm just going to, I know that you should, probably should use Mod Podge with this stuff, but I'm literally just going to use this. Um, I think it's good enough just for the inside of an envelope. There we go. Let's just make sure we've got that stuck right down. And we need to get rid of this glue page before I glue anything else to it. There's another journal card. Right, do I need any more glue on the inside? Tiny little bit. There we go. And then let's just trim off the excess. Quite like making these folios. It's nice to have things to flip out and turn over and tuck in and little discoveries here and there. Right now we can give this a nice ink. Oh it's not beautiful. Nice big rolls right in the middle there. I love that. Let's give this a fold. And I'm just going to run this along the crease. Just a little bit of ink in there. That's better. I like that. Okay. This is a nice thing to do with envelopes. Any kind of envelopes that you're using in any way in a junk journal. Just get a napkin or a piece of tissue paper or um, some of the Stamperia rice paper or if you've got like um, you could print um, a nice pattern paper off you know like the tear sheets um, you can print them off on tissue paper I've got quite a few printed off on tissue paper and it's um, it gives a similar effect to this because it's it's transparent but it's got the pattern over the top and it's a really nice way of, of decorating your, your envelope in a different you know a different way so that when you open it boom there's a nice big flower so, right, where were we? We might as well pop this in. And I'm going to use the tacky glue to pop this envelope in because I want it to be well stuck down. I don't want it lifting up. You can if you want. Now, if you wanted to, you could have that as a tuck. So in the top would be a tuck. I haven't tried that yet. I suppose we could turn this one into a tuck. The only problem is you haven't got much room to have things sticking out. So you would have to really reach in. Um... That's a personal preference. I don't think I'm going to bother doing that because there's enough um, little pockets and tucks and things in this already. Um, but if you wanted to, I suppose you could turn that into a nice tuck. And uh, that would be a nice little secret for you because nobody would know that you've got something stuck behind the envelope as well. Just try and get it in the right position. There we go. Spread that glue out. Make sure it's nice and adhered. There we go. Right, now we can get to decorating. <laughs> so, as I was saying, I've got these lovely um, photographs. <clears throat> and I wanted to use these. Now, them two are quite nice because they're, they're actually matching colour. We could have them somewhere. Um, there's another one that's like a similar colour them two are a similar colour I'm just sorting these by colour and then I can sort them as to where I want them right kind of like the idea of 
I can cut these down so that they're the right size for the page but I kind of like the idea of having those there and then I want something on here so let's see what else do we have um, the rest of these are all brown tones I think well you're not and you're not so we'll have you there because on the other one let me see what I did with the other one so oh I didn't I put something different on the top didn't I so that it's not all samey same so I might do that on this one actually I might do something different at the top um uh-huh okay yeah I might do that right so maybe suppose we could have one of the ladies there with something there like a nice tag okay let's have a look I like this lady as well kind of like that she kind of she's I know she's not as dark as the others but I quite like that right let's cut these down so I want these to be about the same size so I'm gonna match them up and then cut them this the right size so don't want to take too much off but I do want them to sit nicely so I'm just going to trim around them quickly just get these bits out of the way yep they're quite nice now these ones are a little bit too big so again let's just put them together because I want them about the same size I'll cut them from the bottom for the mouse part. They look about right there. Yep, they're perfect. Great. So that's that done. Now I'm going to stick these on and then I'm going to give them little corners. Oh, she needs cutting down, doesn't she? She's just got that nice far away look in her eye. That kind of hmm is it time for cake yet <laughs> or is that just me <laughs> it's always time for cake <laughs> and I'm off <laughs> oh dear me okay <sighs> saying that my daughter's just come in and um, she's been to a local shop and they were selling off the cakes, obviously, um, you know. And um, she's bought back some cakes and she's like, I'll go on, Mum. I'm trying to lose weight. I'm trying to be good. But go on then. <laughs> well, you know, you've got to. It's just rude not to, isn't it? When someone offers you a cake, you've got to say yes. And of course, you have to have a cup of tea with it. I mean, what is tea for if not for cake? Well, you can have it for biscuits, I suppose. <laughs> oh, my hope is case. <laughs> I've been thinking about, um, my husband's been doing like the swimming in the sea, which is the North Sea. I keep on telling him it's the North Sea. <laughs> you know, notoriously bad sea destroyed a whole armada that sea <laughs> um but yeah so <laughs> i've been thinking about doing it with him because <laughs> apparently um I i've always liked wild swimming don't go strong i love swimming in the um the rivers um up in the valleys on the moors um which is absolutely freezing because the water is coming straight down off the mountains um but apparently cold swimming is supposed to be very very good for the body it helps with them um, things like inflammation which is something that i suffer with because of me um my condition um and pain and you know lots of other benefits um which sounds good until you're standing ankle deep in freezing cold water and thinking why the hell am i doing this <laughs> and then it's like hmm <laughs> is it worth it is it really worth it 
Okay, right. Um, now, what I did to get the little corners, I had a couple of my little die cuts, if I can find them. Here they are. Let's see what we've got. And all I did was I cut them. So there's two the same. This is the thing, I want to try and keep them similar. So there's another two and then um three okay we'll, we'll do that we'll do that and they're very simple and i also want to get while i'm here these stickers because they're going to go on and then i did have some others let me see but I wanted one that's got words on. Right. Maybe it's in my other ephemera folder. Let me have a look. Um, do, do, do. I really need to sit down and go through these folders. Ooh. Ooh. Now there's a thought. I wonder if one of them would look nice. Let's see what colours do we have. Not them ones, that's for sure. Mm, no, I'm not liking it. What about these ones? Too big. No, not the right size. Where's my sticker ones? Right, we've got these sticker ones. I thought I had some bigger sticker ones. Or have I lost them? Hmm. I've got these washi stickers. Let's see what can can we get away with one of them? That would look quite nice, wouldn't it? Yeah, I quite like that. We'll use that, right? Okay. There's one thing sorted. So let's get that straight on before I I forget. And then that's going to look nice on there. I can never get these stickers started. They're so awkward. <laughs> Washy stickers. Come on. <laughs> I'm all fingers and thumbs. I can't get it started. Oh, there we go. Right, now I've crumpled it. Okay. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> right. Just try and get it on somewhat straight. There you are. And I'm just going to quickly go around a little. Just to draw down the, the white strip. And there we are. I like that. That looks very nice. Very nice indeed. Now. What were we doing? Oh, were we were doing these. Right, okay. So these are very simple. They're just a little die cut and they're an oval. So first thing is to distress right the way around the edges. And I'm really going to go heavy on the distress on these. Really heavy. I want them really well distressed. I want a Laura age on them. And again, these are just an oval. They're just a different type of oval. You don't have to use ovals. You can use squares. You could just use some scrapbooking paper. In fact, on the other one, I think I just did cut some squares of scrapbooking paper to make these corners. Because they look very effective once they're made and stuck on. Now, here's the clever part. We are simply going to cut them into four. I feel this is going to be a long, um, a long video, so bear with me, folks. <laughs> I was contemplating doing it in two parts. Now we're just going to distress those cut edges. Already done that bit. And then these are going to give us our little photo corners. So let's get these ones on first because otherwise I'll get them all mixed up and confused. 
that. So let's give this lady some corners. There we go, there's one. and the last one. Oh, there's the ice cream van, can you hear it? Remember when I was a kid running out to that? I used to sit all Sunday waiting for to hear that, that sound. <laughs> now they just come round whenever. <laughs> right, and she's got her corners now. I like it. I probably should have distressed her a bit in fact, let's just do a little bit round the edge. Doesn't need a lot, just a little. Just give her a bit of definition. The other ones are quite dark, so they don't need it. But she just needed that little bit of distressing. And she looks quite good, I like her. Right, now let's get these other ones done. So let's do these middle ones, because I want these different. And it is just a case of cutting these into four. Just a little trick for you when you're putting photos into something. Just a nice little touch to make it look nice and um, and aged and old and as though it's a proper old photo book. Right, get these ones. Take the lid off Eileen, it always helps. <laughs> you get these ones in. There we are. There's the neighbours in the garden. Today um, our neighbours, like two doors away, they've got a lovely dog called Pickle. And her dog and, and my dog Dex have had this little love affair going on. And I think... <laughs> You know, he kind of acts like he can't be bothered with her, but then he's always at the fence waiting for her. <laughs> and, um, but it's it's she's quite a lot younger than him. She's only a pup, and um, and he's an old man now. So he, we've we've kept them separate um, because she was very jumpy, and he didn't like it. So today um, she'd been she'd been out for a walk and she uh, was coming home and they took her off our lead to go up the drive and she ran straight into our back garden and um, I was like oh my goodness pickles in <laughs> and um, her and Dex just absolutely spent the, like half an hour just running around after each other um, swapping toys <laughs> he was picking one up and dropping it for her and she was picking one up and dropping it for him it was adorable it was absolutely adorable I was so happy and she was coming in the house and having a sniff about <laughs> and I know I know social distancing Covid but we've all washed our hands and we were very careful <laughs> and um but yeah so she just <laughs> and our dad came to get her and she just plopped herself down on the patio and she kind of looked at him as if to say bye <laughs> it, was like, it was hilarious and Dex was stood in between him and her so that he couldn't get to her like, oh you've lost her now she's she's living with us now <laughs> but it was adorable the pair of them because she's calmed down a lot now so she she wasn't jumpy so he was he was kind of quite enthusiastic to, to spend time with her because she wasn't jumping at him in that which I suppose it's a thing between old dogs and young dogs, you know. Older dogs can't really be bothered with their uh, jumpy pups. But um, yeah, she's calmed down a lot now. <laughs> yeah, so the love affair continues. <laughs> They've had the first play date together. <laughs> she absolutely would not go back to her dad. She was just like, nah, uh, 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 I'm stopping here. There are toys and there are people. <laughs> And if I wait long enough, there'll be food. <laughs> oh, she's always at the fence. And before COVID, you know, we would pop over to the fence and give her a fuss and uh, play with her and that. And it was so sweet. But obviously because of the lockdown and because you're not supposed to, you know, social distancing and all this and touching animals isn't very good because, you know, 
you could give them the germs and then or they could give you the germs but um yeah this is the first time we've seen her properly because we haven't been able to come fuss that and she, i think that's probably why she ran in the garden because she realized that we weren't being we weren't going over to the um, fence anymore so she came running in the garden it was her way of saying i'm still here <laughs> you haven't been to see me <laughs> bless her cotton socks she's a cutie pie so yeah that was our little bit of a um adventure today now dex is like flat out to sleep it's like yeah i've done my adventure today i'm gonna go and sleep for the rest of the day <laughs> but that's it up to him he's a, he's an old dog he can only take so much excitement <laughs> and i think he's had his quota he's like yeah i can run about the garden but not for very long <laughs> She's still jumping about in her garden trying to get back over now. <laughs> she wants to come back. I think Dex is like, yeah, yeah, you stay over there now. <laughs> we'll, we'll do it again soon, but not right now. <laughs> We're going to go and sleep for the rest of the day. Bless him, he's an old man now. And he's a grumpy old man sometimes. <laughs> right. I just think these give it a nice little finished edge as well and I quite like the way that they work. I might put something in between those two, just a little, I don't know, maybe I'll put an ornate sticker or something. Oh, you know what, don't leave the glue at the top of your glue. This is such a, a cute little craft to do. Nice. So we'll just get this one put on. I love nice um, quiet days crafting. It just uh, it's just a nice way to spend your time, isn't it? And look at what you can create. Right. So that's all the corners put on. So they're looking quite pretty, I like that. Now I want something here and I've got these lovely little flowers which I thought might look quite nice. I'll pop that up a bit so you can see. So I think I'll just give that a nice ink and I want to ink it quite a lot because it does, it is kind of the similar colour to the background so I want it to be st stood out. So I'm going to give it quite a heavy inking. And that way it should stand out a bit. Just getting all the little nooks and crannies. That's better, yes. Yeah, I mean, you could put anything that you wanted there. You could put um, stickers or you could do a nice little label. I just fancy having a flower. Quite like a botanical feel. Right, before I do anything else, I've just noticed these corners. So I'm just going to trim these round same as we did before and this is just off where we put the coffee dyed paper in and then that's all nice and neat there we go right you could decorate these if you wanted to i'm going to leave them blank because i think that's good journaling space there and there um so that's that's okay and then what i think i might do is add a flower to this bit as well and that will just mirror the bottom and I quite like these um, flowers like I say the similar colours um, and I think these are from Tim Holtz I think it's a botanical kit um, something like that anyway um, if I just pop it up the side there like that yeah that's going to look lovely A little bit of glue on make sure it's all covered and then we'll pop it up the side there we are there we go oh that looks very pretty i like that and like i say you can go on decorating these as much as you want now on these ones i think 
these might just be the right size let's just give it a go and see these are just stickers that I got out of a craft, uh, craft shop I think it was the works um, and they're just nice shapes and I like the fact that they've got like the brown packaging colour as well hopefully they're, they're going to be okay oh, ever so slightly too big you know what I'm putting them on anyway I like it I want there to be a sticker there more ink on it doesn't matter I mean they're not covering up much and it looks you know looks organic like the they've been added later on to to put annotations on so that's okay and that just finishes those sides off I think it's like you can put something there if you want I'm going to leave them you could even put if you wanted an, a little belly band and then you can tuck things in now for the envelope I want something for to tuck the envelope into to, to shut it so I'm going to pop this in this is just a die cut and I, there's a stamp that comes with the die cut and um, they make lovely little labels and I thought well that would be perfect because then you can add something to the label um, if you wanted to pop a word on it give it a really good inking I want it really nicely inked there we go now oops I want that quite low so I'm going to go across the bottom and it needs to have a little bit to keep that flap shut the crumbs everywhere Now I've got some curly cues and let's have a look and see because I like curly cues just as a way of decoration. It's quite nice. Let's have a look. Do I have another? I do. Yeah, I think that's nice. That just gives it a nice um finish and because these are just you know I'm not going to be able to go around them I'm just going to spread the glue over just dot it on and spread it over because otherwise it's just you're not going to get the glue <laughs> where you need to go because it's just too delicate but at least this way I know that I'm dabbing it on where it needs to be and again these are just off die cuts um, I think I've mentioned in previous videos I'll just sit with all of my dies and I'll spend an hour or so just cutting out loads of different things because you know you never know what you're going to need when you're going to need it and if you're out like me I'll, I've only got limited space so I can't have the cutting machine it's a um I've been calling it a cuttle bug it's a Sizzix actually I can't have the Sizzix out um all the time because um there's just not enough room so I'll sit and I'll cut loads of bits out um, and then stick them in my ephemera folders and that way I've always got something you know I've always got things when I need them so I think I'm just going to pull that out so that's got time to glue I think we're about done now let's think about what we're going to put in so this is one of the letters that I've um, printed out on the tissue paper and as you can see it's a little bit um, it's not completely focused but that's fine because I quite like that you can see the writing and you can still read it but it's kind of got that aged look as though it's started to the, the ink started to spread and, and um, dissipate so I've got that and you can journal on these if you wanted to I personally I don't I just like them as a piece of ephemera I, I just like the crinkle and the feel of them and I love the look of them so I'm just going to fold that up and then that can go in and that just makes it look like you know this is somebody's old love letter or something you know I know I'm a, a hopeless romantic and then what I think I'll do as well I've got some of these photographs printed out on card so let's find a nice romantic one 
well that's nice but I'm, I'm gonna go with this is a, a, a lady's folio so oh there's a nice gentleman he could be the one who sent out the love letter couldn't he let's see what else we've got and now here I am I'm off again telling stories <laughs> I can't help myself I like telling stories so when I'm making a piece of ephemera and there has to be a story shoot now he's the only gentleman right we're gonna have him in there and he's gonna be her true love and I've just printed it on white card so you can journal on the back there's plenty of room for journaling on the back there and we'll just pop him in actually we'll pop him so he's in front of the letter and he's just poking it there with his letter there we go and then I've made a couple of tags I've just used some off cuts and I've put the um the actual pictures on that I've used for the folio and then I've put like on this one I've put feed your soul and that one make art and just put a couple of flowers on I think they're going to be too big yeah they're going to be too big so I might just pop these in here and then that's that nice and full and then you know when it comes to putting ephemera in you can put anything in so let's have a look and see where I've got because I've got lots of bits of of ephemera that would fit in and I'm just going to pick out some smaller pieces that I think will fit and will look good um not them let's see where else we've got now I know I've got some Timmy so we'll get some of that out I like that one with a nice blackbird I don't want anything too big Let's see what else we've got what are these okay no they're like old like old um it's a barber shop I don't want that advertisements that's the word I was looking for no what else do we have what else do we have what's here field labels no we don't want field labels maybe in the other ephemera folder there might be some so let's have a look in there you can make the ephemera to go in these if you wanted to it's entirely up to you um actually I've got a few of those why don't i use I made some of these lovely false stamps. Why don't I put one of them in? That's a nice one with the rolls on. Yeah, I'm pop that one in. Um, here we go. Here's some ephemera. There's a postcard. That would be something that you would have in a secret hidey hole, wouldn't it? Um, telegraph now. what's that no I think they'll be too big but we'll try one anyway I think that's about it so let's let's see what we've got let's see what we've got um we'll do the top pocket first so that's going to fit in and we can have that just sticking out slightly and then the pulse card have that sticking out slightly and then I might pop the little birdie in and have him kind of poking out ever so slightly there now in the bottom just gonna fit there and that's there we could even have a quick look through these and see if there's any that's going to fit in there I don't think I think they're all too big too tall 
yeah they're all a bit too tall I mean we could cut them down some but maybe that one didn't print out properly you can see the lines in it it's no good um let's see what else we've got I've got these nice little fashion cards so let's see because these I mean she's a young lady she's going to be interested in fashion isn't she so how about one of those and just have them poking out the top like that I think the rest of these are all quite historic oh that's not it is with the pop that in the top too tall and it's oh, it's the same one as that one okay so not them what else do I have I'm just looking through bits of ephemera we've used the blackbird how about that nice little gardening thing and that can balance that colour out sorry I've lost camera that's going to balance that so we've got one stuffed pocket two stuffed pockets and a stuffed envelope and then plenty of journaling space now we fold it all up and the last thing I need to do is to pop on some ribbon so I've got this ribbon and the reason I've got this is because it's quite thin and I want thin ribbon so let's just pull it all out now I want it to go around this will stay closed <laughs> eventually it just needs to be trained I want it to go around twice so if I cut it about there that will do now let's find the middle and I'm just going to poke that through if I can get it through there we go there we are and now just close up like that and that's a much nicer way to have it close and I'm just going to chop them bits off the end there we go there we are and that's done you can decorate the outside if you want I kind of like leaving it plain and I'll tell you why I like leaving it plain because I think when you open it up there's that much going on that it's kind of a nice surprise so when it's, it's plain on the outside and you're thinking well what's that it doesn't look like much and then you open it up and you've got all sorts going on and there's the first little peak is this lovely lady and then you've got these and then the bottom and then you open it up again and again and it's just it's lovely I could really love this one and the envelope in the middle it's full of lovely bits and pieces we've got a love letter we've got a little lover we've got our little sisters who are who are in there and then it all closes up into this nice little wallet so I hope you've enjoyed that make I've really enjoyed doing it and um, it's it's so much fun and I think I'm going to sit and make a few more of these I might do some different themes so I might do a botanical one actually if I do I'll show you on the um, on the next video um, how it turned out because you could theme these any way you want I've themed these this one as like a, a young a young lady who's you know got a secret love affair going on and she's got all of our lovely photographs in there um, but again I could do a botanical one and decorate it with botanical specimens and things like that and it would look great as a specimen folder um, but yeah there's there's lots of different ways that you can do this and um, you could do it um, I don't know you could do a nice autumn one with like lots of autumn photos and, and pictures you know there's so many different ways you can do these um, and it's just a basic nice basic wallet and it just looks so cute and it looks like a bit of an envelope on the outside as well and then when you open it up and it's it's great I love it so I hope you've enjoyed that give it a go if you enjoyed the video please do give it a like uh, and subscribe subscribe the more subscribers we get the better because then the more stuff we, we can learn together and 
and craft together and have fun together so i hope that you've enjoyed that i hope that you've um you know that your week's going well and stay safe stay healthy and happy crafting bye